Hi, my name is Darcy Cassavant, and I'm a librarian at Harris County Public Library. Today I'm going to show you how to search Ravelry.com to find free patterns and also to find patterns in the books that we own in the library. Ravelry.com is a free site that you register and it has lots of options. You can, it, I use it mostly to search patterns, but you can also search yarns. I do this a lot when I have a skein of yarn that I really don't know what to do with and I wanna see what other people have done. Um, some people even sell them, sell yarn. Community is great big fun. You can join groups and there's a fandom for everything. Support, so now the support is not how to crochet or knit. The support is how to use Ravelry.com itself. Keep that in mind. You'll have to go to other sources for learning the craft itself. For yourself, you can, you can keep track of your projects. You can keep a cue of what you're going to make next, what yarns you have in your stash, any things you've hand spun, tools, your favorites, your library. The library is where you keep track of the books that you already have bought if you want to. It makes some of the searching easier. I could come up here to patterns, but I'm going to use the quick search and I'm going to search for a dinosaur. I want to make a dinosaur toy for my friend's baby. All right, I hit enter and let's see what come up. 1,412 matches. 30 pages to go through. A little more than I want to do, even though I really like looking through the site. I'm going to narrow my search, like we do. I think I want to make a T-Rex. So I type that in, I hit enter. 140 matches. Little Three pages to look through, a little more, more manageable, but um, there's some pieces of clothing that I don't want to do, I want to make a toy. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to filter my search. I'm going to come down here to category and I'm going to click on toys and hobbies. There are some subcategories, but I'm just going to click it all because I don't know what I'm going to get. 98, three pages, much more manageable. I bet we can do better. I'm going to come down here to availability. I'm going to click free. These are the patterns that are free either through uh, that, that will take you to blogs or they'll be um, downloaded, free formatted patterns that Ravelry hosts. Um, same thing with purchase online if it's hosted on Ravelry. Purchase online will usually mean something that you will get from an Etsy shop or um, a Ravelry shop itself. And this is a really great way to support small businesses if you want to. Purchase and print. This simply means that the pattern is in a book. And even though I'm not gonna purchase a book, this will enable me to look in our library's collection. And I explained Ravelry download, I explained library. Discontinued is a tricky one because usually that means that it's no longer available and I have had much sadness with this. So by the way, amongst all these dinosaurs, you're like, what? There's a kitty. Notice it's a keyword search and the designer is Angry T-Rex Roars, which is a pretty cool name, but it's going to pick up stuff like that. So 26 matches, very doable and I can get them for free. I kind of can scroll through and, oh, I love him, but I think it's going to be too complicated for what I want to do. So I'm going to say no. Same here, adorable, but no. Uh, this one's kind of cute. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to my favorites. I'm going to click these three dots. I'm going to save it in favorites. I can add some notes and comments. I'm going to mark to say baby gift. And I'm going to put down dinosaur so that I can find it quickly. 
and I can get save changes. That doesn't mean I'm going to do it. It just means I can find it again. But as I scroll down, I see something that says baby. It means it's an automatic baby gift. I'm going to open it in a new tab. And there it is. It's published in a book. So it's not it's not free, but I can get it in a book. Ugh, over here, if it was in a book that is currently in print, it would give me an Amazon link. It's not, which probably means it's out of print. But I see here that I can search your local libraries. I'm going to click on this link. This takes me to a site called WorldCat. This is a this shows me the holdings of other libraries internationally. And it's one of the ways to let me know if I can get a book through our interlibrary loan service. So I'm looking through and uh, it looks like a thousand miles for each library. I, I love my friend. I'm not going to drive that far. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to copy the ISBN and then I'm going to go to our website. I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom under services. I'm going to cl click on interlibrary loan. I'm going to I'm going to expand it here. This shows how to use interlibrary loan. I already know how to do it. I'm going to click here to access the Texas group catalog. Now the reason why we go through our website to do the requesting rather than the free site that we were just on is because this is this is the database that's actually connected to our service so that we can get the book. So I'm going to paste the ISBN number that I just copied and I'm going to search the Texas Group Catalog. Uh, it gave me no results. You know what? Let's expand the search to libraries worldwide because I know that there are three libraries that own it. Let's search again. There it is. There it is. Let me click on the title. I see the three libraries that owned it, just like I saw on the free WorldCat page. And so I can come over here and I can request the item if I like. It takes four to six weeks. I may not want to do that. So I am going to come back to the Ravelry search and I'm going to look some more. Now, I love this one because it looks like I can make it up really cute. I mean, this one is cute, but it's got all the scales on the back. This one doesn't. No color changes, no additions. It looks really easy to do. I'm going to open this up in another link. And here it is. Very cute. I can come over here to where it says nine projects and the cool thing about that is i can see how other people have done it some people added stripes um, you can see how fancy or simple people did it the colors they used love that so it's in a book it's not free it doesn't have a link and it's in a book called dinosaur amigurumi i can purchase this book on amazon if i want to don't want to i'm going to search my local library. So I'm going to click on this again. Once again, it's going to take me to the free WorldCat site. And hey, it looks like Harris County Public Library owns it. So I'm going to click on the link. By the way, do not worry about this library administration. It doesn't matter what branch you are. It simply refers to that's where our ILL service if we have it. You we can get the book anywhere to you. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me to the old catalog. And I see that we do have the book in print. The search will only show me books on print. I'm going to click on the title, see where we are. Looks like we only own one copy and it's been checked out a while. So it's probably not going to meet my deadline. What I do notice is the author's name is fairly unique. 
I'm going to click on that just to see what comes up. Ooh, we have a copy on overdrive. I'm so excited. So I can place a hold if I like here, or I can go directly to hcpl.overdrive.com and I can go here. I'm going to put the title of the book, Dinosaur and a Gurumi, and it takes me to the book. And the book's checked out. I'm going to click on it anyway, just to kind of see what it's about. It explains what the term amigurumi means. And I can place my hold about two weeks, still manageable. I'm going to read an example just in case. Um, one of the reasons why I do this a lot with craft books is I can kind of see what other things look like and I can see if I understand terminology. So I know if this is going to be within my skill set. So I can check that out. Let me go back to the Ravelry page for the project from this book. Up here, it's already in my favorites. Here it could say create project. It's already in my project, but let me click there. I could create a new project with that, or I've already made it. So I'm going to go to the project page on my project page. Here he is. I renamed it T-Rex Baby Gift. I added some information, including a link to this blog. I could have added some more information about what kind of yarn I used and what kind of hook, what size hook I used if I wanted to over here. And all of this is totally optional. Um, I show, I picked that I was finished. I chose that I really liked it as a pattern. The date that I started it, the date that I finished, I'm gonna save changes. I'm going to give it an overall rating of five. The clarity rating is four and I'm going to put piece of cake. So what that does is that helps other people who are searching for patterns that gives them a little more information by somebody who has actually done it. The other thing I really like to do is photos because I love to look through photos, photos of people, what people have done. And it gives you a lot of options. You can upload it from your computer. You can also do that from a mobile device. Um, Instagram, if you tag it, hashtag Ravelry, what will happen is you will get a message on Ravelry saying, this has been tagged, would you, would you like to connect it to a project? It's kind of handy. Uh, Google Photos, Flickr, whole bunch of stuff. I've already done it. I've already done any editing I'm going to. I'm finished with photos. So this project, this baby gift is done. Um, I didn't use safety eyes. I embroidered them on because he's a baby. Um, I also did some stitching so you can see that he can move his little, his little legs. And I think that's going to make a really cute baby gift. I'm kind of excited. So I hope this has been helpful to help you find patterns either for free or in our library. And thank you for watching. Happy crafting.